Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. All God's Children by Betsy Skinner takes place in the late 1980s when women were first being called to serve as leaders and pastors in the mainline churches. It's when the GLBTQ community was deeply closeted and the AIDS epidemic was rife. The story is about a small mainline Midwestern congregation splitting over the candidacy of a gay man to serve as music director. The pastor struggles with a growing attraction for and involvement with a man in the congregation, which the code strictly forbids. A near-death accident changes her from being merciless towards herself for a tragic accident in her youth and helps her arrive at a more grace-filled understanding of herself and her God. The congregation of a collective fallen and forbidden foibled characters nearly falls, but miracles happen. Easter comes. Betsy is a retired United Church of Christ minister who lives in north central Florida. Since retiring from full-time ministry, she's authored her novel, worked as a freelance writer, trained and ridden mules, taught and tutored elementary age children, and helps take care of elder mother. She's a native of the southern part of the United States, tends to the small hobby farm, and seven critters. She has her hands full. Certainly, Betsy Skinner, author of All God's Children, our guest on This Week in America. Betsy, a pleasure. Welcome to the program. Oh, thank you, Rick. It's nice to be here. Appreciate what, your hosting. Well, I love what you're writing about here, and the message, and the book is so well done. And the book, by the way, available at Amazon, Ex Libris, the usual places. We'll give you that information as we're going. I mentioned a little bit about the background of the book. Although set in the context of the church, how does this novel, do you think, depart from mainstream Christian fiction? Well, this is important, Rick, because... Um, if this novel were to arrive at a checkpoint that was guarded by the mainstream Christian publishers and booksellers, this book would not get through the checkpoint. Yes. It would be rejected. And its departure is because um, its content is you know, would be considered controversial. Women in leadership in, in positions of authority, uh, a, a gay individual um, who's wanting to enter a leadership position in the life of the congregation, and um, boundaries issues. This is a, a, a woman pastor who has uh, a deep romantic attraction to one of her parishioners. So it's a little dicey for the traditional Christian publisher selling uh market. You've got all the elements there that capture our attention. The book is All God's Children by Betsy Skinner. Do you think the readers would perhaps be refreshed by the story because of the progressive leanings in, in the book? Well, I think some readers would be. I think some might uh, find it offensive, if you will. And yet I think there's so many readers who seek a Christian faith that is authentic, um, you know, where people can show up as who they are uh, um, in spite of who they love and, and who they are um, and, and feel a sense of the mercy and grace and all inclusiveness of God's love. So many people have been turned off by the message, um, you know, of ridicule and judgment. You know, God is this old white guy on a, on a judge's stand uh, rendering a verdict, and usually a, not a positive one. So this book really allows and gives permission to the reader to reconsider um, the vast expanse of God's love and reach to all, all God's children. And you do it in such a way. I mean, Paige Turner is sometimes overused in talking about a book. This, In this case, it is not. We want to find out what's next. So many different elements, so many different layers with the storyline and the characters you have in All God's Children. Betsy B. Skinner, our guest on the program. What was it like for women to serve in positions of authority almost 40 years ago? And then I'll, we'll get into the character here in a second. But is her story any, any part of your story? Yeah, a little bit, Rick. I was uh, I was uh, in seminary in the in the middle 1980s and being called or hoping that I would receive a call somewhere uh, in 1985. And um, you know, women were in the in the more progressive churches 
excuse me, that's my phone. Women were, um, you know, considered, but usually uh, not, um, you know, not in visible churches or churches with, uh, you know, some level of prestige and yes. certainly not in senior pastorate positions. So we, we just were so grateful to get anything that paid the, paid our way. And, and uh, you know, so it was not easy by any means. It might be interesting <laughs> for younger readers as they're going through this and realizing it hasn't been that many decades ago when things were totally, totally different in, in churches. And you, you point that out in the book, All God's Children by Betsy B. Skinner, our, our guest on the cro- program, Betsy P. Skinner, as you're Googling that. Talk about the main character in the book. Kel- Colleen, am I saying that correctly? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's interesting. Mm hmm. Yeah, she's 40 years old, and um, she, this was her first call out of seminary, and she goes to the middle of nowhere, because that's usually where women were called, to the middle of nowhere, and usually the congregation is rumbling because they don't really want to hire a woman, you know, what in the world is she going to do, and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, prejudice, gender prejudice and bias and misogyny is, is rife in that period, I believe it still pretty much is. And, um, you know, she's just, she's been divorced um, and she loves God and she's on her own spiritual journey to understand God in a more mature way while she's leading this bumbling congregation. And uh, she has a really bad limp and the limp is an outward sign of something that happened in her past, which she's very ashamed of. And uh, it takes uh, literally getting bumped over the head in a, in a near drowning accident and a near death experience to shift her attitudes and understandings about about God's view of her. Um, and and then to add to the tensions for her, she's very attracted to and becomes involved with a member of the congregation. Um, and and that that creates major tension. Am I still with you? Do you still have me? Yes, here? yes. And I'm, is, okay. you're, is you're saying I heard could, a beeping. Could she, yeah, so, could she be yeah. censored? Could she be censored for this? Um, you know, depending on which denomination she was serving, there are all different standards for how clergy and pe- people in clergy authority are allowed to or permitted to interact with their parishioners. She definitely betrays those boundaries and is hugely concerned about the code in her church which forbids interactions, you know, fraternizing with the congregants. Um, And so in in the particular denomination where she serves, I don't think she would be censured. She might be given a warning. And also it's basically about power differential. And they haven't done much studying or looking at power differentials between female clergy and male parishioners. It's usually the other way around. not that I'm condoning her behavior. And I think her behavior is a point for discussion around clergy parishioner boundaries. And that's why I recommend this book uh, to church groups and to leadership of churches to, to be a, a launching point yes. for discussion about, yes. you know, clergy parishioner boundaries. The book is getting excellent reviews, All God's Children by Betsy P. Skinner, our guest on the program. There's a clearly a spiritual component to the story, actually more than a religious one, the struggle of the minister to grow out of the her childhood impressions about God into a more mature understanding. How does that change come about in her? Talk about that struggle, because some of us could relate to that struggle. Yeah, you know, the you know, for most of us who were given some exposure to the Christian faith, you know, our understanding of God, our teachings about God and faith ended, you know, when we left Sunday school. And so we leave with a very juvenile, um, you know, understanding, you know, that and usually it's a negative one, one that generates fear and and distance between ourselves and and God. And then and if we've had a bad experience, You know, it's all about hellfire and damnation and you better believe this way or else. And so we leave and then we don't have any other experience of God. And this character, Colleen, grew up with that. You know, the the heavy handed Southern Baptist preacher, um, goats to the left, sheep to the right, hell and damnation. And she's trying to work her way from that um, harsh view into something much more merciful and kind, a God 
you know, of just uh, indescribable love and mercy. And so she has this near-death encounter where she actually encounters this perfect light and love, and it really shifts her view of how God sees her. It's more really about how how God views us as as much as how we view God. And so God, for her, becomes much more approachable. And, um, you know, then you can begin to have a real intimate relationship and, and, and go through life with with a much deeper peace and a sense of, of uh, that there is this divine being who really does care, who really does forgive, who really does extend mercy and kindness and grace and pardon instead of sending us off to the, you know, the shoals of hell. <laughs> yes. yes, exactly. So that's the spiritual part. Yeah. Betsy Skinner, our guest on the program, author of the book, All God's Children. You'll find the book available at Amazon, Ex Libris, the usual places. We'll list those before uh, we end the program again. And you can find them by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. I mentioned before that a younger audience reading this might not recognize the church three, four decades ago. And again, maybe they would. Is in a way is everything changed and nothing has changed? Isn't it difficult still yeah. for some denominations? Yeah, that's really true, Rick. I mean, forty years sounds like a long time, and yes. to the younger audience, you know, really things haven't changed. The LGBTQ community still struggles to find a home in the life of a con- in the life of a congregation yes. where they can feel free to sit in a pew together and hold hands and. And, and get married and, and not be castigated or thrown into a de-gaying program. And, you know, the suicide rate among gays, GLBTQ folks is, is still real high, um, you know, because of self-rejection and feeling like God even has rejected them when it was God who made them the way they are. So there's that struggle that continues. And then there's still denominations that don't ordain women and, and, and allow women into positions of authority. Um, and then, of course, the boundaries thing is real and alive, and it should be. That's an important discussion, you know, the boundaries, as we know from the debacle in the Catholic Church, um, where so many people have been wounded and injured by the betrayal of those boundaries. So that's a really important discussion that needs to be ongoing. The book is All God's Children, and it really seems like this, it's a novel, but could be used as as a tool as people explore issues like you just mentioned, boundaries, homosexuality, women in authority in the context of the Christian faith and church. Do you agree, is this a book you should read, enjoy it for a good story, but it really should get you thinking about where we are and where we, we need to go? Agreed. Agreed. I mean, you can read this book on any level. It can be sheer entertainment. It can be a challenge to your spiritual growth and life. And it can get you really thinking about those issues that I've raised um, and that you've mentioned. So you can read it at all three of those levels or any one of them. And I hope, you know, uh, it's just at the end of the day, just a really fun story, you know, just an interesting, entertaining story. That would make a great television movie or a, uh, a movie in itself, a theatrical movie. Any talk about doing that, I, it just sort of jumps off the I page and I can visualize this story. And there's so many layers to this. It's a great human yeah. story. Yeah, Rick. Well, I, I appreciate your mentioning that. Um, you know, the, the marketing, the companies that want to help you market your book, I was approached by one that wanted to, for me to consider a screenplay for this book. And I've been really scratching my head over that. And and I think, um, you know, with all of the cable networks that we have, there's just an infinite supply of offerings for screenplays, for stories. So thank you for the prompt. I may take you up on that. Well, there's so many streaming services out there looking for thought-provoking material and entertaining material. You've got all of that in your book, All God's Children. Let's talk about a character in the book, another character, Wonderful Counselor. Explain the <laughs> character, because I, I love that character in the book, All God's Children. Talk uh, about that. Thank you. Well, a wonderful counselor is this kind of homeless man. He's kind of scraggly, and he has these beautiful, starry eyes. And he enters the he enters the building one day on a worship Sunday, and uh, sitting in the back, and the minister's dressed out, and 
you know, she's all worried about the conflicts that are happening. You know, the church is splitting over the gay issue and other things. And, you know, she's so uptight and, and, you know, she just says, God, you know, just give me eyes of love, you know, just, just give me eyes of love to look through at my congregation. And she looks up and she sees this mysterious, strange man in the back pew looking at her with these glistening, uh, incandescent or whatever the word is, you know, bright light eyes of love, of pure love. And he, he appears and we is woven in throughout the story. He, he pulls some fast stunts, uh, on the congregation and, uh, leads, uh, leads the minister into deeper conversation again about God, the way God surprises us and, and not to get too stuck in our ruts and to be open to mystery and to surprise. And, um, you know, so he's kind of like a Holy Spirit character. I liked him. I didn't want to kill him off. <laughs> well, I'm glad you didn't. The readers will appreciate that as well. I hate to ask if you've got like something you'd like to share, maybe one of your favorites there, but you're, you've got so many scenes. You've, they're delightful. They're surprising. Sometimes far-fetched. Uh, any that uh, one in particular that you would enjoy sharing with us today? I hate to ask just to pick one because I'm sure there's several, but one you could share uh, with us today that would capture our attention. Uh, well, one I really enjoyed writing and um, that would make, I think, a lovely children's book. Every year, the, the congregation puts together a live Christmas crash and they bring in all these live animals. And then they have this Jesus doll who is really sacred to them, this little Jesus doll that they put in the manger. And this year, this particular year, the Jesus doll is stolen and everybody's freaking out. What are we going to do? You know, how, what are we going to do to have a baby Jesus in the manger? And um, Colleen, the minister, has this way of sort of hearing, you know, hearing God. And she says, you know, there's somebody out there that that we need to respond to. And this young Hispanic woman comes pushing up to the on a bitterly cold night, pushing up with a with a uh, a uh, a carriage with triplets, newborn triplets, not newborn, but infant triplets. And she volunteers her triplets to fill the, the uh, manger uh, for the creche. And so everybody's scrambling to find ways to make sure that these triplets are safe and warm. So it's, uh, so on that uh, Christmas Eve, the creche uh, contains a manger with triplets in it. <laughs> so, so there's three Jesuses in the manger that night. And uh, anyway, I, w I would love to write a, uh, a children's book about the three Jesuses. Well, see, I see a movie in there, and I see a children's book, and I see a, an excellent novel because uh, Betsy is such an excellent storyteller. Betsy Skinner, the book is All God's Children. If someone is listening and thinking, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd sort of like to read that book, I think that would be something that would be entertaining and give me some, some food for thought as well. What would you tell them, intriguing them, to, to read this book? Because you're the one that wrote it. You know what you would like to, the emotions you would like to, uh, to uh, spark in us. Um, well, I think, Rick, we could, if people have listened to this interview and your questions have been poignant, you know, hopefully they've been intrigued. So I feel like I'd be repeating what we've already said, really. You know, if you're if you just want to be entertained, if you're if you're a uh, disgruntled Christian or church member and you might want to be invited back to the possibility of, you know, of a way of being church. That's not the way that turned you off. This might give an example of that. If you're um, a leader in the church and you need a piece of material to uh, evoke conversation um, about, you know, the GLBTQ issue and Christianity in the church, or if you're a woman in church leadership and want to just hear somebody's story to which you could really relate, um, if you're a young person and you're thinking about, you know, what would church be like that is this all inclusive, then this would be a model of that. So, 
Or if you're just stuck at home with the COVID virus and you've read every book under the sun, then you need to just go ahead and bite the bullet and read this one. <laughs> one more book and you will enjoy it. It's All God's Children, a true work of art when there's so many different uh, emotions that uh, that we, we, different readers will, uh, that you'll touch as, as you're reading the book. And you do that on so many levels. You know, writing a novel... I'm not telling you anything because you didn't really isn't simple or an easy undertaking. What were the challenges when you took this story? You wanted to bring in these different levels. You've got these characters. You've got the, you have these different storylines. What was, what were the challenges like in writing all God's children? Oh yeah. Rick, that's a good question. Um, it's really difficult. I mean, everybody in my belief has a book. And the only thing that distinguishes the writer from the non-writer is the person who actually sat down and wrote it. Okay. Yes. So the challenge is just sitting down and writing the darn thing, you know, and that, that, that's difficult to do. It, it's not, it's not for sissies to write a book, especially a novel, because you're really facing into a blank canvas and you've got to just come up with, and this is all done, I believe, by some sort of divine channeling. Yes. You know, inspiration means in spirit. You come up with in the middle of the night sometimes with these characters, with a plot turn. You know, how's this plot going to move? Who's going to be involved in this story? Where's it headed? Is there anything to be learned here, you know? Um, and it was a 14 year process. It's, it's really, really difficult. So I'm, it was a bucket list item that I had. And I am a writer. I've always been affirmed for my writing capabilities. So it's a miracle that it came to be. And you've written other books. Are you working on anything now? Um, you know, something is working on me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. You can yeah, really, I'm, I'm just, people keep saying, you know, write more, write more, write more. And I tell you, with a narrowing window of time, I feel I have, it, it's such a huge task. I'm, I'm yeah. just working on training and riding my mules right now. And maybe well, I'll write a book featuring mules because they are my passion. <laughs> well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. And uh, training a mule and writing a book, probably similarities there. That you I think you've uh, frozen, Rick. Go oh, ahead. I got you now. Can you still hear me okay? Okay, I'm going to wrap up. Betsy Skinner, <laughs> our guest on the program. Betsy Skinner, Betsy P. Skinner, if you're Googling. The book is All God's Children. You'll find the book available at Amazon and Ex Libris. Betsy, thank you for joining us on the program. The book is All God's Children. You'll find it at Amazon. Information, of course, online at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.